our sculpture today, you're only going to need a few things. Pencil, we need a sharpie, a pair of scissors, and some sort of box. If you have a large box like this, that should be enough. If you have smaller boxes, you might need to. First thing you want to do with the box is open it up. Um, when I say open it up, I mean try to separate where it's been glued together um, along the bottom and then along the edge so you can have as much usable material as possible. Um, as you open it up, you'll see it's all this nice brown color. And it's time to get busy cutting some strips. Now if you have a ruler, go ahead and get the ruler out. You're going to need that. If you don't have a ruler, um, I'm just going to make myself one here. I need something that has a straight edge. You can do all sorts of things to have a straight edge. I'm going to use the fold of the box to be my straight edge. And so if you were to cut yourself a piece and it, that piece includes the fold, then I can have that fold as my ruler piece. Of course, you can use a regular ruler or any other thing that gives you a straight edge. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw some straight lines. We want to get some strips that we can use. Now the strips are going to be about an inch wide. Um, if you think about a standard ruler that you would have, it's going to be a little bit narrower than that. But if you go too skinny on these strips, it will cause a problem when it comes down to being able to use a slot method. It's just going to be too skinny and you'll find your piece falling apart. So a little thicker is better. If you're in doubt about how wide to go, go a little bit wider. Now we want to get as many strips as possible right now while we're at it just so that we have them available for our sculpture. So use all the space that you can to get as many strips as you can. Once all your lines have been cut, you can cut off all the extra parts that you're not going to need and then start cutting your strips into individual strips. Now that you have a whole bunch of strips, we're going to need to have our scissors and we're going to need to have our sharpie available. So take your first strip and we're just going to learn the process of using a slot to attach our things together. One nice thing about this process is it doesn't involve any glue or glue stick or tape or anything. It's just simply using the slots to connect together. It's important when you do slots that you only go halfway across your strip. If you go all the way, you cut it off. If you go more than half, it makes it really weak and able to tear later. So I'm going to have you draw the line with your marker just so you can see it and then cut it carefully so that way you're cutting only halfway across. Now leave a little bit of space at the end too. You don't want your slot too close to the end or again it's really weak and easy to tear. So I'm going to leave a little extra hanging off every time I make a slot. Now what I want to do is I just want to see how the basic slot idea works. And so I'm going to take a second strip of paper and I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to make a shorter piece. So notice how I put the marker is closer together and so now I can cut it off so that I have it like before where I have a slot cut pretty close to the end of the piece. Now what I'm doing here is I'm not really having a plan of what I'm going to make. I just want to show you the process of putting the slots together. So they fit together. Now they should be able to fit down all the way so that they're at the same height as each other. This is sometimes a little bit tricky. You might have to do a little bit of looking carefully to why it's not sliding in completely and move things around a little bit until finally it seems like they slide within each other. So as you can see here, when I had a long piece and a shorter piece put together, one of them has to curve naturally in order for them to join together. And so the length of each strip that you use will affect what happens to the pieces you're joining together. So now if I wanted to go ahead and join another piece in here, what I'm going to find is starting with the slot, drawing first, and then cutting off what I need. So I'm going to try a piece that I think is going to be able to go across. And so I'm going to cut off the extra parts. And these extra parts I'm going to keep because I might want to use those later. Now I'm trying something this time where what happens if I leave the slot really close to the edge or what happens if I do it farther away from the edge. So when I do it farther away from the edge, I have this extra part hanging off the edge, which I might not want, but we're going to see how that could be useful later. Now notice since I only cut the slots on one of the strips, I'm able to slide it around and reposition it. Finally, when I know where I want it, I'm going to make a little mark. It doesn't have to be a really solid line, just a mark that I can see 
so I know where I'm going to be cutting the other parts. So now I made the mark there. I'm going to cut halfway across, even if I didn't mark her all the way across or halfway across. Um, I'm able to know roughly where it is. Now I'm trying to find where that mark is. Oh, it might be on the other side. Oh, there it is. So look around until you find the mark you made and cut up halfway across. Since I laid it in there, it should match because I tested it out and marked it first. So I know that these two should go together. Again, when you put them together, it may be a little stubborn at first. It should be able to fit all the way down because half plus half is going to equal a hole, which means it should slide all the way down and they should fit flush with each other. So keep wiggling it around until finally you can make it happen. Again, you're seeing I'm joining more than one strip together by bringing in another strip. And so the process I'm doing right now is just showing you just a method of how can I connect them together. I could connect them together with straight lines. I could connect them with curves. If you want to have a nice curve, notice what I'm doing. I'm taking my marker, holding it against my thumb, put the strip in between them, and I just keep pulling and pulling. In the process, it's going to bend your paper. So if you want to have nicer curves that don't fold on you but stay curved, that's one method that does work. Try it out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to, again, the process, since I don't know exactly where to mark both pieces, I'm going to mark only the first piece, cut the first piece, and then I'm going to try it out. I'm going to position it where it needs to go, and then once it's positioned where it needs to go, I'll be able to mark the other piece, and we'll be good to go. Okay, after that strip has the two slots cut into it, I can position it on here and see what I think. This is a time I can move it around and try different spots, and when I finally find a spot that I like, make a little mark so you know where the cut is going to happen. Now I'll go find those spots. There's a line. Again, your mark may not be a perfect mark. It just needs to tell you roughly where it is, and then cut it halfway across. I always cut halfway. If you go less than halfway, it's not going to go all the way down. If you go more than halfway, there's a potential it's going to be very weak and start coming apart on you. So again, wiggle and wiggle, try to move this, the pieces around until finally they fit within each other. This is the part where sculptors really get used to using their hands and looking carefully at what they're working with um, to make things work. It's a very hands-on process. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to keep adding more and more strips, seeing how I can join two together, how I can join three together, how I can join four together. And so right now I'm just learning a process. I'm learning how I can make slots, cut the slots, join the slots together, and build up a piece this way. Now right now, I don't have a plan in terms of what this is going to look like. I'm just working with it in a very non-objective way, just looking at different lines, different spaces that get made, the different shapes that get formed, and in other words, I'm just experimenting and seeing what are different things I could do. Now, certainly this is one way an artist can work and say, I'm just going to see where it leads me. Um, and then the other way to go is to have a plan in the beginning of, I want it to look like a certain thing. And so right now I suggest that you start by just experimenting without a big plan because you need to understand how to use the materials before you go any farther with it. And so I'm going to keep creating here where I'm just adding things together and adding things together and we're going to see what happens. All right, let me go ahead and speed things up. What I'm continuing to do is trying to go across and connect two strips together, sometimes three and sometimes four. I'm also trying things of continuing curve making by using my marker and pulling along. This time I'm making a loop by making a slot connect to itself, to it, its own strip, and so that little loop that hangs off there, I'm trying a piece where I'm folding it in half first, and then I'm doing my marks and then cutting them because when I do this, now it sticks out like a point. And so, again, it's just trying out some different things. One thing a sculptor needs to do is they need to be familiar with their, what their materials can do, and this is something that is probably brand new to you, so it's fine to just experiment and see what happens. Try things that you haven't yet done. I'm trying out, what if I did another point here, and I notice how I can lay them in different places and see what it looks like, and I'm dealing with where it is, then marking it, then cutting it, and then marking the next ones and cutting them. It's a process that after you do a few of them, you start getting used to and it starts to make some sense to you.
Now, one thing that can be done when it comes down to creating a sculpture in this method is you might create something without an intention of it representing anything, whether it's very realistic or very abstract, or it may just be non-objective. But in this case, I looked at what I had and I saw something that reminded me of a bird. And so I decided to follow that and see if I could make it into more of a bird. And so that one loop really stood out as an eye and that one point in the upper right area looked like possibly a bird wing and then I saw that point on the other side look like the tail of a bird and so then I said let's go ahead and do this. Now you don't have to turn yours into something but it's an option that's kind of fun to do when you see that it starts looking like something. And so I decided my next thing would be to create a head to go around that eye. And so I thought well I'm gonna need a beak in there so I did the folding technique to make that pointy and then I cut a long piece which I could cut off if it's too long but then I'm going to try it out. And so I think I had where it's going to be. I cut the slits and position them to see if it's going to fit on there. If so, then I can go ahead and cut the other slots so that this works out. If you ever have a spot where you cut it and you realize that was a bad spot, be careful if you do uh, an edit or a recut really close to that piece. It's going to be really weak there. So you can just leave the cut there and don't worry about it, but then you do want to leave a little distance between where the cut is and your new cut. Now you can see what I was picturing in my head when I saw that eye, and now I have worked ahead around it. If I want to continue following this idea of turning it into a bird, then I need to see what things do I want to add to it that are going to turn it into more of a bird. I want to see how I can modify the wings, tail, maybe even some feet and legs, and so that's going to be what I start doing next. As I continue to add new strips, I continue to experiment with things that I think will maybe work, but you never know exactly if it's going to work or not until you do it. And so I encourage you to try it out. And if it doesn't work out, all right, well, you gave it a shot. Find another way to do what you're trying to do. So I'm continuing to go along here. I decided I wanted a, a large tail to stick back beyond the edge of the bird. And so I did that. Now right here, I had a spot where I had a couple pieces together and that created a problem because my regular slot would not fit over two and three pieces together. And so I had to cut the slot extra wide right there so that it could fit over all of those pieces. Now putting it on there ended up still being quite a challenge. And so if you're ever going over two, you might find that it is a lot of work. And so I did make it happen, but it would have been easier just going over one. So now I have a, a long piece, but it didn't quite go as far as I wanted, and so I'm going to keep going with it and finding another way to make this work. Now I'm using a double fold. I'm using a fold to create one corner, and I'm creating a second fold on that piece to make a second quarter, and that's really starting to, to develop what I was shooting for here about having that tail stick back farther. I decided I wanted to make more of a wing show up compared to just that point that's sticking up. And so, again, I, have, I don't have too many options here, so I have folding and I have rolling and curving. And I have some different things I can try to make it look kind of bumpier, the way that maybe the ends of the feathers would look on the wing. And so, try it out and see. I'm fairly happy with that, but I do see that something's really bothering me about the bottom part. So, I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And so, this is be like as I'm trying it, I, I really want it to pull together and... Taping would be a way to go, but I'm trying to do this without any tape, and so I'm going to make a slot somewhere where I can pull it together, and then the slots with a get joined together now lock it in. There we go. I'm feeling pretty great about this. So now I'm going to figure out some feet. With a lot of these things that, that you may create, no one's going to tell you exactly how to do it. Problem solving is all about seeing that you need to figure out how to do something, and it's up to you to do it. So again, I have folding I can do some bending, some different things I can experiment and see it. Maybe I get it on the first try, maybe I don't. In this case, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I have way more strip on there that I need, so I'm gonna cut off some of the extra stuff after I'm done. But right now, I just wanna see, okay, I like the foot sticking down here, or the claws are bent downward, and I try it out. If it seems like it's gonna work, then I lay it in there, and then if so, I'm gonna make some marks on the spot on the body that I need to cut the two slits. So every time I do this, I make little marks and then I need to go back and cut those. Cut, cut. 
at some point you just need to call it finished and as I add these feet on here I look at it and I'm pleased with how it is and so I think I'm done with my bird. Let me show you a few other things when I was trying out different techniques. This particular thing here um, it's really not objective. Uh, I want to point out that as you make these things, if you do them right, they should be able to stand up. Let's see if my bird stands up. It does. Chances are if it doesn't stand up, it's because you didn't put the slots together really tight. As you can see here, I made something else. This was a seahorse, if you can't see that. And this one here, we have some sort of a tree structure. For the seahorse, I had a plan in the beginning to make that, and so I was drawing out a seahorse, and I was trying to see if I could make it to that. When I did the one on the left, I didn't have a plan. I was just putting pieces together. When I made the tree, I honestly didn't have a plan in the beginning. I was just putting pieces together, and then it created some sort of a triangular shape, and it, to me, looked like a tree would work great for it, and I wanted to go after it. I ended up doing something similar to the bared foot to do the trunk of the tree. I have this one. Now you can see how the bird looks when it's 3D or standing up. And we can see the, the different box showing through. So there's the bird standing up. I hope you really enjoyed this process. Whether what you make looks like something, it's very representational, or it doesn't look like anything. It's non-objective and just a bunch of cool lines and shapes. Either way, I hope you really enjoy the process of being a sculptor.